Good evening and welcome to the English News Program. NTV wants to help you understand the major news events of the past week by providing them in English. My name is Danny Wolf. Oxford Business Group's editorial and research team will pull resources with the Foreign Investment and Foreign Trade Agency to produce the report, Mongolia 2012, which is set to provide groundbreaking coverage of the country's economic activity and investment opportunities. Last week, both sides signed the cooperation memorandum. Oxford Business Group, the global publishing, research, and consultancy company, is expanding its reach across Asia as it prepares to launch a first-time report in Mongolia. Foreign investment and foreign trade agencies are government agencies tasked with promoting and facilitating foreign direct investment and trade in Mongolia. The agencies work to enhance Mongolia's investment environment and support industry in its development while also providing information and matchmaking services for businesses. The report is scheduled to be published in late 2012. Foreign Investment and Foreign Trade Agency's Vice Chairman said he was confident Oxford Business Group's forthcoming report would bolster Mongolia's effort to highlight its development and international platform. The report, Mongolia 2012, will be a vital guide to many facets of the country, including its macroeconomics, infrastructure, banking, and other secretarian developments. Oxford Business Group is a global publishing, research, and consulting firm which publishes economic intelligence on the markets of Asia, the Middle East, Africa, Eastern Europe, and the Caribbean. Oxford Business Group's online economic briefings provide up-to-date and in-depth analysis of market intelligence and advice to firms currently operating in these markets and those looking to enter them. The government has started a program to build 100,000 new homes in Mongolia. Medium and low income citizens will have the opportunity to take part in the program. According to the plan, a total of 16 blocks of housing will be built in the city and countryside. The first of those blocks, which will be named New Yarmag, has already been planned and is ready for development. The New Yarmag Micro District will be built near the Yarmag in Hanol District. New businesses in a hospital will be needed for the 15,000 future residents. The government has agreed to take a loan of $300 billion from Export of China in order to create a financial source for the new Yarmag Micro District, which the Prime Minister signed when he visited China last June. The program will be implemented with the backing of Development Bank. The board chairman released a credit guarantee for the loan under a term of 12 years at 4% a year. Vice Speaker of the Parliament, G. Bathu, met on Monday with German Ambassador Fischer to discuss the completion of his diplomatic mission. Mr. Fischer has worked as an ambassador to Mongolia since 2007. During their discussion, Mr. Fischer said his four years spent here was very effective and was happy the government of Mongolia had chosen Deutsche Bank as one of the investment partners for the Erdenes Tavantolgo. This is a good example of the bilateral cooperation in the economic sphere that Mr. Fisher has helped to build. He also pointed out the collaboration between government groups have been expanding and a parliamentary delegation will visit Mongolia next week. Germany Chancellor Angela Merkel also plans to pay a state visit to Mongolia in October of this year. In turn, the Vice Speaker emphasized that Mr. Fisher has significantly contributed to developing the bilateral cooperation as well as the Mongolian-European Union cooperation. He went on to say that Mongolia is looking to attract investments from Germany in the field of science. There is a strong desire to have collaboration in mining, technology, and environmental protection between the two nations. Prior to Mongolia, Ambassador Fisher served in India, Italy, the United States, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Cambodia. Last year, students received 500,000 Tugrik from the Human Development Fund for tuition fees. The government renewed its commitment to continue these payments next year. The law states an allowance from the Human Development Fund can be granted as non-cash for educational services. On Wednesday, the government decided to grant around 500,000 Tugrik to each student in the upcoming academic year. On Wednesday, the government decided to grant around 500,000 Tugrik to each student in the upcoming academic year. It is calculated that 85 billion Tugrik is required to distribute the money to the almost 170,000 students of universities, institutes, and colleges. The fund also goes towards students' health insurance. 
According to recent statistics, the Mongolian economy showed large increases in foreign trade. Although the increases were not due to new trading partners, the amount of exports to existing partners has gone up. Increases in exports help improve the economy, and the last four years has shown favorable statistics. Exports increased from $1.97 million dollars in 2007 to $2.5 million in 2008. Due mainly to the global recession in 2009, exports diminished to $1.89 million dollars. In 2010, exports rapidly increased to reach almost $3 billion dollars. Increases are also projected this year. According to the National Statistics Office, Mongolia exports to 160 countries worldwide, but nearly all trading is done with five of these countries. In 2010, 84.8% of exports were sent to China, while 4.9% went to Canada, 2.8% to Russia, 2.3% to the UK, and 1.1% to South Korea. Remaining 3.1% went to all the other trade partners. Last Monday, the graduates of Kihang He University opened their exhibition in Mongolia. The exhibition continued through the 19th of August. In all, six teachers displayed over 100 artistic creations. In the exhibition, works were displayed that described the traditional Korean way of life. Organizers are hoping to have joint cooperation of Mongolian and Korean painters in the field of traditional art painting. The Korean painters were invited to Mongolia by the Fine Arts School and expenditures were paid for by a Korean company. Many young Mongolian painters have graduated from the Fine Arts School and the Korean painters expressed a desire to have the artists come to Korea and display their works of the Mongolian nomadic way of life. Proceeds of the exhibition will go to help mentally handicapped children. Thank you for joining us tonight. See you next week on English News. On behalf of the NTV News team, I'm Danny Wolf saying good evening.